first step in the drainage waste and vent installation process is to mark out. This is where we lay out everything, where the fixtures go. Obviously you need information about the fixtures, what those fixtures are, the size of those fixtures, the center of drain or center of fixture locations. And you also have to have some understanding of the code and what are the minimums required for space between fixtures, uh, space away from a wall, different things like that. Once all of that is laid out, marked out where it needs to go, then we have to find the path for the pipes. So we're marking out where the pipes will go to connect where those fixtures are. That would include marking out within the structure where pipes go in the studs or in the joists. And that would also include making sure that we have slopes. As we're bringing those pipes through studs or joists, we have to adjust those elevations so that the pipe will have that slope. Then we go through and we create the path. This means drilling holes, opening up floors, making it possible for those pipes to come through where they need to, and for fixtures to be connected as needed. After the path for the pipes has been established, it's good to also put your targets out there. You have your toilet flange, you're going to secure that to the floor so that you know where to bring the pipe. Same thing with the shower drain, you can set that in place. You're bringing your pipe from stacks or horizontal branches to those locations. So this is a part of just getting set up. Most DWV installations will begin with this, a pipe coming out of a concrete floor. This was installed, of course, in the underground stage, but now it's time to run that stack up. Since the drainage pipes will have to be tested, it's important to put a T in where we can create that test and separate it from the pipes that are below ground. So a test T like this is a great option. This one has a plug inserted in the top so that we can start the test there and test everything that we do beyond but also that test plug can be removed from the opening of that cleanout. Coming out of the top of the test tee, we can run our stacks. Those stacks will go up to other locations, other fixtures. We'll need to branch through some of the other structure, like the joists, to get to those fixture locations. And that's all a part of this drainage installation as we're bringing those pipes to where we need them so that they can remove that drainage from those fixtures. Some drainage piping may be hung below the structure. You'd probably want to talk to the general contractor and make sure that's all right. They may be okay with being able to box out around that later in a basement like this. But once again, we have the very important point of making sure that that pipe has proper slope and that it's supported so that it won't sag or have bellies. That would definitely cause problems with the drainage. From below the floor, we can work those pipes up into the joists and structures bringing them to those target locations we set up earlier, like our toilet flanges, and connecting up our shower drains. Again, all pipe does have to be properly supported, and there's different options for supports. You can use plastic plumber's tape. It's a strap that can hold that up. Uh, wood blocks can also be used to support pipe. We're talking mainly residential uh, pipe supports at this point, but there are also other options in commercial. Once the drains are in place, we work on venting systems, and these vents are used to provide air to the drains so that they can flow properly. Venting systems need to be designed and installed according to code, so you, you really have to have a good handle, a good understanding on the code of how you install vents. Now this is something we go over in Chapter 9 of International Plumbing Code, so we'll make sure that you have a thorough understanding of how to do venting. But again, this is an essential part of the drainage waste and vent system. Special drain connections for appliances, like a standpipe for a washer, can be installed and recessed back inside the wall so that that piping isn't exposed, but we have a good place for the drain to be connected when those appliances are brought into the building. Vents for fixtures are often brought all the way vertically out the roof so that they can supply enough air for the drainage system. And it is common in places where it's cold to increase the pipe size that goes out the roof to avoid the possibility of freezing. Those vents can actually get covered in frost. Now the book mentions the concept of a trial assembly. We're gonna call that a dry fit. That's where you put the pipe into the fitting and kind of put it together to see if it's gonna work. I use dry fitting quite often just to make sure that whatever I'm gonna build is gonna to come together. But the challenge with dry fitting is that if you forget to glue a joint, or to properly assemble that, then of course you're gonna have a leak and it will tell you on the test, you will find it, but that can cost time. So it's important to be really cautious if you're going to use dry fitting to make sure that 
you've got everything put together when you're done. One very important point about drainage fittings is that the sanitary T or Santee is only to be installed for drains in a vertical orientation like this. Not on its back, not on its side, because it only has that short sweep. So this is how you install a drain sanitary T. If you're dealing with horizontal branches, then you're going to use Y's, combination fittings, or a Y and a 45, long sweeps, to enable a better flow for the drainage, not a Santee. The book points out that when we install vents through the roof, those have to have a flashing to prevent water leakage from coming in. That flashing slides over the pipe and fits between those shingles. It is important to remember proper protection once those pipes have passed through structures where they could be damaged if screws or nails are driven into them. We have to protect them with nail plates or other things to keep that from happening.